Hi everyone, it's great to be together. I am so looking forward to keeping up our conversation about the apostles. Remember that Jesus had 12 friends who were with him during the three years that he traveled from place to place sharing the message of God's love. We also know that these friends were with him when he went to Jerusalem for the very last time and was put to death on a cross. But then the best part came. After three days in the tomb, these same friends saw him again. He appeared to them and told them that he would leave them to return to God, but he would send them the Holy Spirit so that they could do the work that he had been doing and showing them all the way along. We know these friends were called his disciples, and we also heard that they were called apostles. I wonder why there are two names for them. The differences in those names are important. A disciple is a student, and an apostle is a messenger. You know, these friends of Jesus were students of his while he was traveling and teaching and helping them understand him and his message. Now that Jesus was going to be with his Father in heaven, he was giving them a new job, the job of taking the message they had received from him to as many places and as many people as they could. They were now his appointed messengers. I am sure this made them feel both wonderful and fearful. It must have been wonderful to hear that Jesus trusted them to do this, and it must have filled them with fear that they would even be able to do it. Has anyone ever trusted you with a great task, but you were a little afraid to do it? You know, your parents were entrusted by God with the great task of taking care of you and teaching you, which is so wonderful, but that can be scary for them too especially when they are first getting started. You should ask your parents how they felt when they brought you home the very first time. Make a list of the words that describe their feelings and keep your list and we will use it over the next couple of weeks. Pause the video, talk to your parents and get those feelings words. Hi everyone, remember me? I told you about two apostles last week, and one of them was the Apostle Peter. Peter met Jesus the first time when his brother Andrew introduced him to Jesus, and Jesus grew to love him very much. Did you know that our church, St. Andrew, is named after Peter's brother Andrew? Well, it's true. Peter was a challenging friend of Jesus. Pause the video and see if you can rearrange the letters in these mixed up words to make words that describe Peter. The words are right here, so pause on the list and take your time. Make sure you check your answers with the list. I hope that was fun and you got most of them right. I wonder which of those words you can speak the most about. Think about the words on the list and choose one that is like you or that describes what you would like to be. Pause the video again and write the word you picked on a piece of paper. Write it big and then have someone at your house take your picture with the word. We will do something with these pictures next week. So I'd like you to send them to Reverend Deb. Pause now. Our word list has told us a bit about Peter already. We know he was a fisherman like so many of the other apostles. The Bible tells us quite a bit about Peter in the book of Acts, after the Holy Spirit came. There is another word we can add to the list about Peter, and that word is healer. Listen to this story from the Bible. I'm reading from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. One day at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 
Peter and John were on their way into the temple for prayer meeting. At the same time, there was a man crippled from birth being carried up. Every day he was set down at the temple gate, the one named Beautiful, to beg from those going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter the temple, he asked for a handout. Peter, with John at his side, looked him straight in the eye and said, look here. He looked up, expecting to get something from them. Peter said, I don't have a nickel to my name, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. He grabbed him by the right hand and pulled him up. In an instant, his feet and ankles became firm. He jumped to his feet and walked. The man went into the temple with him, walking back and forth, dancing and praising God. Everybody there saw him walking around and praising God. They recognized him as the one who sat begging at the temple gate beautiful and rubbed their eyes, astonished, scarcely believing what they were seeing. And now Peter has done what Jesus would have done, healed someone who was in need. We can learn from Peter that we can do the same thing. We can help others too. We can be like Jesus. I think Peter wants us to know that. Think of someone this week that you can help. The Holy Spirit filled Peter to allow him to be a messenger for Jesus. And the Holy Spirit can do the same thing for you. I am sure that the Holy Spirit works in all of us to give us a power that we don't know we have until we know we have the Holy Spirit. You can see the Holy Spirit working in other people. You know, Mrs. Mode is right. The Holy Spirit does work in other people. There are people that we know who are very good at strengthening others by telling them or showing them what God is like. Peter understood God a whole lot better because of Jesus. So God became Peter's strength. You may know ways that God has become your strength. Jesus said that Peter had the ability to help others be strong. Jesus said that Peter was strong like a rock. His name even means the rock. In the Bible, in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18, we hear about this. Jesus said, I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. Peter was to have the kind of role that he had because of Jesus in building up the church. That makes Peter seem like a pretty big rock to me. I found this really big rock to help me remember Peter. Think about this. Think about how Peter was a rock how we can be a rock. Find a rock somewhere that you can even paint to help you think about Peter the rock. You could put Peter's name on the rock or something from Peter's symbol. The crossed keys, the upside down cross. Then you can put that rock somewhere special to honor those who build people up. Now I think we should pray for our world and the people in it who need to be built up. Let's pray. Dear God, we want to tell you that we love you. We want to remember how you sent Jesus to build up Peter and the other apostles so they could help to build up the church. Keep building us up so we can all be strong. Amen. Thank you for praying with me. It will also be good for us while we are looking at the apostles in the book of Acts to learn to pray the Acts way. Each letter in the word Acts names a way we can pray. The letter A is for the prayers of adoration. When we pray with adoration, we show our devotion to God. A prayer of adoration might go like this. 
Dear God, I love you. I praise your name. The C is for the word confession. We tell God in prayer that we are sorry for the things that keep us from being close to God. A prayer of confession might be like this. Forgive me, God, for not loving others as much as you love me. Then there's the letter T for the prayers of thankfulness or thanksgiving. We tell God of all that we are grateful for, for all the ways God has blessed us. We could pray like this. Thank you, God, for all those in my life who care for me. And then there's the S. S is for the prayers of supplication. That is a huge word, a word you might not have heard before. In these kinds of prayers, we ask God to help us or others. We might say this, Dear God, help me and help my family in all that we need to do. I hope you'll try praying this week using the Acts way of praying. And I will pray that you will come close to God as you do this. And I pray that you are blessed by this kind of praying. And speaking of blessings, here is our blessing. So important for us to do this each week to remind us of how God is with us. And we do it like this. God loves you, God is with you, and God blesses you. Bye-bye.